All right, cadets, uh, Dr. Cook back here for MS200 talking about how are we going to do the steps of arraying our forces and assigning leadership during AGADAP, all right? We'll look at that specifically. Arraying your forces, all right? So we went back to Doctrine. Doctrine gave us some information about how to lay out our fight, and uh, that gave us something as a template. And maybe the template looks like this, all right? We want to do our uh, attack. We're going to have to have some fixing forces and enveloping force. We want to put someone out on a screen and, we, and have a reserve, right? So doctrine tells us to lay things out that way and we start with that. Then we go ahead and put the enemy on the battlefield um, and what information we have about those. Now up here in the top right, you can see all of our forces. Now we're going to want to go two levels down, all right? Two levels down. So the brigade commander is laying out his companies. The battalion commander is laying out the platoons. And as platoon leader, you need to be laying out your fire teams to figure out where to put them. All right, so here are all the fire teams. So in our platoon organically, we've got six rifle teams, and then we've got two heavy weapons teams. All right, now let's just notionally say for this fight, we also have attached to us an engineer team, and we've got a uh, heavy scout team. Uh, team with us, right? An armored scout recon team for whatever reason. Okay, that's what we were given. Now, when we look at doctrine, we're supposed to have these forces here. We have a fixing force um, that we want to look at. Now, when I start looking at this and scratch my head and say, okay, how can I use all my fire teams and match them up against this template of where my forces go? All right, now for me, the first thing to start with is, hey, I'm going to take my heavy weapons teams. I want to put them in that fixing element. I could put one in, in one side and, and, and use some rifle squads in the other, but I want to split them up, make sure I've got heavy weapons spread across that entire front. So I put a uh, heavy weapons team into both of those sides. All right. Now, maybe I think those are enough and I spread it out that way, but maybe uh, I'm looking at the enemy there. Hey, there's, there's just a whole uh, enemy rifle team across from them and I need to overpower them. So maybe I say I also need to back them up with some rifle teams uh, to augment that, to make sure that my fixing forces have enough combat power, all right? And I lay my force out that way. All right, then I come over here and say, all right, um, I got to have this enveloping force, all right? Now, they're going to have to assault across the objective, so I want to make sure that they've got two rifle teams with them, all right? And I want to put my engineer team there because they're probably going to have to breach some obstacles in order to get onto uh, the objective or wherever I want them to be. All right, so I've got those two fire teams and an engineer team as part of that enveloping force. All right, now look at this template. Okay, I need somebody to screen. Uh, who am I going to put up there? You know what? I'm going to put one of my rifle teams up there on that screen. All right, I just need one rifle team. They're just kind of, you know, screening that flank to make sure nobody comes along. And, and if something did, we, we can adjust and send some other forces. All right, now I've got this reserve down here. And maybe part of that, what goes in the screen, I said, you know what? I'm going to put... Uh, that mounted unit that I got, those scouts, down in the reserve because they can move fast. And I'm going to put another uh, rifle team with them. Um, now, that's my reserve. So as the battle develops, I can flex that force out there and see where they go. All right. Now, notice I didn't put any numbers on these. I haven't said whose teams they are. I just had assets and I decided where to put them on the battlefield that made sense to me. All right, after we are done developing our concept of operation, which is writing out the concept without using names, just talking about the elements, we're going to come back to uh, that plan we just developed, and we're going to have to assign some leadership to it, okay? We're going to go through it and determine where am I going to put squad leaders and how I'm going to use the other leadership in my platoon to organize all these fire teams. All right, so I started out, I had all these fire teams, and I want to look at them and say, all right, how can I get some command and control here and turn these things into squads? How many, because really this is about how am I going to use my leadership? All right. Now I look at this, I've got uh, a weapons team and a rifle team attached to them. That's all the way out on the edge. I want to put my weapon squad leader there. He's going to know best how to use those heavy weapons and put that all in there. All right. Now these things are separated in space. That other weapon squad, you know what? That squad leader doesn't have those. All right. But I'm going to put that together organizationally as a squad that can get controlled easily by a squad leader. So that comes to that other fixing force. Maybe I want my second squad leader in there. All right. Maybe, you know, Sergeant Jones used to be a weapon squad leader and he really knows those heavy weapon systems. He'd be a good one to put in charge of that force. All right. Uh, 
because of his particular skills. All right. Then I come over to this enveloping force. Say, you know what? They're going to be moving. There's a whole team there. Um, you know what? Uh, Sergeant Sanchez, she's really great at that kind of operation. She's worked with those engineers before. So I'm going to put her in charge uh, of that element. All right. And that becomes first squad leaders element now. All right. And I've got this engineer team together with two rifle teams. And I, and I got a first squad leader in charge of that. All right. I'm going to look at this and say, you know what? That, uh, that There's only a fire team up there in screen. You know, and I could leave a high speed E4 up in charge of that, right? Because um, Specialist Breeze is pretty good, you know, but um, that's kind of a critical thing. Because I do have these, this reserve force, I could put a squad leader down there, but you know what? That screen is important. I don't just want a team leader in charge of that. So I'm going to go ahead and put third squad leader up there, all right? Because I want to have a good NCO in charge of that. They're operating out on our flank. It's important that they're, they're uh, doing the right thing. They're kind of independent. They're outside the fight. I need a good squad leader up there. All right. So even though it's one fire team, I want to have a squad leader with them. And that leaves my reserve force. All right. Now, what am I going to do with that? Now, maybe I want the platoon sergeant in charge of that. I'm out of squad leaders organically. All right. So I want my platoon sergeant to run that. Now, maybe I as platoon leader would be a good person. I, I want to have control of that reserve, except, you know, that's hanging back in the fight. Platoon leader should be out there in whatever the main element is somewhere up on the front lines. Platoon Sergeant's a great one to put in charge of that reserve, all right? They've got a lot of skill, and that gives some leadership to that reserve force. And that reserve force, having a reserve is all about being able to flex and make calls on the fly and not really having a plan. So to have your most experienced soldier in the whole platoon down there managing that would be a good thing. Because who knows? You might need to split those teams up and send uh, one team one direction and uh, the scouts the other way. Maybe they're all going to move together. All right, great place to put your, your NCOs in charge. All right, so that's all about how we array our forces. All right, so once I've done that, I can consolidate this map down now, all right? So uh, now I've just reorganized the map and showed it with squads, with squad leaders in charge of it, okay? And then over here uh, in the top right, you can see that I've written out um, a task organization, right? So first squad, engineer team attached. Second squad, I want you to detach that rifle team to fourth squad, right? Because that doesn't quite show up in a picture, just squads. Third squad, detach a rifle team to serve in the reserve. All right, fourth squad, weapons. Detach one weapons team over to second squad, right? So second squad and weapon squad just swapped uh, a fire team, all right? But that was our plan. And then we got a reserve force, all right? We've created a squad, basically. We're gonna say, hey, that's under the platoon sergeant's control. And they've got an armored scout team attached to them. All right, so I've given a task organization. I got some plan of where all my forces are and who's in charge of them. And they all have leadership. I've now arrayed my forces for this fight. All right, now, this isn't the only way I could have done it, right? I mean, I could have gone ahead and said, you know what? Uh, I want to have first squad over here being plussed up with three rifle teams which means uh, maybe this fire team's not there and my reserve is just those scouts that I have, okay? And that would give me three rifle teams and an engineer team on the enveloping force, all right? I could do that. I don't have to. Um, it's just another mechanism that I could have used to do it, all right? Now, you notice, too, in this, um, you know, we generally don't specify uh, which team, right? We just tell squad leader, put one of your teams over there, all right? But maybe for this mission, hey, you know, that... That reserve rifle team might have to get sent out on their own because I might send the, the rifle team one direction and the scouts another direction. And I might want to go ahead and tell my third squad leader, like, hey, I need you to attach somebody, but I really, really want you to give me uh, Specialist Johnson's rifle team. All right, because Specialist Johnson's high speed. He's up for promotion and, you know, he can operate uh, on his own in that kind of capacity. All right. And I don't want you to give me the dud you manage that, right? You're a squad leader, you go do that. All right, well, I hope that gives you an idea of how we can take that doctrinal template, put forces up against it, and organize those into squads to try and develop what our task order looks like that'll achieve our mission as we're doing our ag adapt during our COA development. All right, see you in class.